Hey everyone, Jay here from Jade Productions, back with another video here today to show you the update on the Caradron Overlords and the building that army. And this is also the first in a series of videos focusing on the various armies that I've got, examining them, looking at them, talking about uh, them, how they play, what the thought process of the list is, that kind of thing. So. Uh, this is a very uh, small Caradron force that I have assembled. It uh, comes to 2,000 points exactly, leaving me for room to expand if I so wish. Um, and I've basically covered the staples, covered with everything I've got. Um, the only thing left to do on this army currently is to finish basing. As you can see, there are some that are unbased unfortunately uh, I just haven't gotten around to it because uh, this basing here takes a bit of time to get done which is what it is so first off let's begin with a rundown of this army so first things first for our leaders we have our Admiral Ingvar Stoneforge uh, lovely little model here that we've uh, painted up. I'm quite happy with him. So we have an Admiral leading our force. Uh, then we have an Endrin uh, Master. Then we have a Chemist. And then we have a Navigator. So the Navigator is probably the least useful of each of these, but I wanted to have one of each character. Um, I don't have the Endrin Master with a balloon, unfortunately, but I don't particularly need him. He's not important for my list that I particularly built, and I'll go into the list after I cover what's in it. Um, of course, there's two units of Arcanaut Company, and as we can see, I kind of got them differentiated between uh, swords and axes. Uh, then, for the rest of our battle line, because this whole thing is painted in the Barak Urbaz colours, or my interpretation of Barak Urbaz, um, the city of merchants, that we can field uh, these as a battle line. But the way I've got this army set up is, uh, instead of just the Gunstruck Ground Haulers, we can field uh, multiple uh, different things. So this is useful for us, so we can change up our list and play with different barracks when we want. I mean, we're still painted Barrack Urabaz, but you know. Um, we've got two Gunstruck Gun Haulers, uh, both of which have cannons. The drills were really, really tempting, mostly because the drills can do those mortal wounds. The problem with the drills is quite simple, that you need luck, and I am quite honestly one of the unluckiest people in Warhammer when it comes to the tabletop. I know everything about the game, but dice hate me. Uh, but we've also then got here a nice large brick of 15 um, Gunstruck Thunderers, an excellent unit. They all have the rifles. Um, this is because I wanted quantity of firepower and accuracy over all the shenanigans. Um, it would, simply, I looked at it all, I did the math. Um, for a big brick like this, it's unfortunate that I felt that the, the guns are really just um, a trap. They didn't seem, any of them, like they really, really, really felt like a trap and not worth having whatsoever. So, the thing was I settled on on having it all with rifles. So we've got a nice, nice brick of 15. And then we've got ourselves a nice unit of Skywardens, again, with no special weapons. Felt like they were a bit of a trap. Um, plus... Uh, I do see the potential in the Sky Warden special weapons, uh, using them as small heavy weapons teams with uh, the machine guns and the the launches of uh, the spear launches, um, the harpoon launches. Sorry, uh, I really saw a lot of potential in those. But what I wanted these guys to fill in for the rest of my army was to act as a shock troop and screen that I could use with the rest of this army because um, these are. 
the Arconaut company are pretty useless. They're mostly just going to sit on my objectives and act as objective grabbers, right? They're, they're screens and objective grabbers. These guys act as shock troops, and the real power comes from these. And, of course, this bad boy in the back. The Henretta. Named so for our company. Just adjust the lighting on that. So, yes, uh, one, ironclad, uh, very important, never going to leave home without an absolutely um, amazing model, um, terrible flight stand configuration. And then we also have a unit of Endrin, uh, Endrin riggers. Uh, again, no special weapons, just their saws to get the most out of those and their, their rivet guns, just so they can do it, uh, you know, work to support this army. And the emphasis being that <clears throat> a lot of the eggs in the basket of this army are going into, so pretty much uh, these 15, and uh, the Admiral, and uh, this guy, are, are all, and the, and the Chemist, if I want, are all going into this. And it's going to overburden it, so it moves slowly, but I don't particularly care. Because that doesn't stop the, uh, the fly high ability. So the idea is to literally just skirmish and darker the opponents to death while everything else works to grab objectives and weaken stuff. So that's literally it for the army. As I said, it's Barak Urbaz is the uh, color scheme. That's the sub-faction I intend to play it as. Um, unfortunately, I bought this in 2020, and there's only been one tournament since then that, since I completed it, that uh, I could have participated in. Unfortunately, I couldn't get to it. Um... And it's a really lovely army. And Caradrons I really, really like. They're, they're underpowered in um, most configurations. And by I say underpowered, I mean they're nice and average. They're a nice level average playing field. The great thing about Age of Sigmar is that the power differential is not as keenly felt in certain circumstances. Um, I could, if I wanted to, play these guys as Barak Zilfin, unleash a bunch of random shenanigans, drop some Skaven Warp Lightning Vortexes on stuff, and, you know, do the usual cheesy overpowered thing like everyone else. Um, I'd require a few more models, but in this particular case, this is near 2,000 points on the dot that I have and can use, and we are now at completion. Um, something that I really liked is I went and I made a bunch of... Uh, just little tokens, taking some spare 25mm bases, and uh, using them as um, my Aether Gold uh, markers. And you can see uh, everything gets Aether Gold, except that shouldn't have any. <clears throat> and, yeah. Actually, that belongs to... Yeah, that's a spare Aether Gold. Um, so, yeah. And so you can literally see what, what has Aether Gold. Actually, I just realized that, that Aether Gold... Marker belongs to that guy back there. And so I've got a bunch of spare because, um, abilities and Barrack Urbaz. And, you know, they're just nice little counters that don't get in the way. Um, and I can use those to track stuff. And I'm, I'm super proud of the paint job on this. On all of these guys. Because they are all 90% contrast. The, uh, red... Uh, cloth is all, uh, it is all, um, contrast over some gray seer. Even the armor is, um, it's gray seer followed by a layer of, um, silver, a really bright silver, mithril silver, actually. Or, uh, they call it something different now, um... Ah, uh, it's a really shiny silver. Um, followed by a coat of um, Aether Quartz Blue, or Aether Blue. Aetheric Blue. Yeah. Another another blue contrast, straight over the metal, so that the, the metal shines through underneath. And so it's really striking and effective. I particularly love it. And of course, uh, this army is 90% working with metals, um, so a lot of the details... Uh, but most of it's been contrast where I can get away with it. Uh, a few leathers from Baylor Brown. So it's been a nice mixture. Even the ships were done with contrast. Uh, they came out pretty okay. 
did some weathering and chipping on this one, as you can uh, see. And uh, all the characters uh, were painted uh, separately. You're, it's totally a requirement when you're doing this. Um, you're going to have to paint your characters separately before you put them on the ships. Um, and this is really it for the overall army. No, uh, there's real no plans for expansion for this army. Uh, the next step is to take it out for a spin, everyone, and that is uh, the current update for the Caradron Overlords that I've put together. You've now seen the army go from beginning to end, everything's painted, almost everything's based, and she's ready to be played in the 2,000-point list that we built her as. Um, in terms of expansion, we can take her out in a few different areas. We can play with the format of the list a couple of different ways. And overall, I think this cost me, uh, let's see, there was two, three, four, five. Uh, overall, it cost me about 600 AUD. Don't question that because, um, <clears throat> Games Workshop pricing in Australia, but don't, don't, don't worry about that too heavily. Um, suffice to say, this was one of the cheapest armies I've put together, and it's complete, it's playable. It's well balanced. It's got a little bit of everything. Um, if there was one thing I had to expand into, I would maybe grab some regular dwarves from the uh, other armies. Um, I can use T's fire slayers as well. I'd maybe grab uh, some frigates, but frigates are really expensive for what they do. So maybe maybe two frigates. Um, maybe another gunstruck gun hauler. Maybe um, I would have made some of the more weapons magnetized. If I had the magnets. But I was building this during uh, COVID lockdowns. And and painting it. And suffice to say. That was such a pain in the ass. The fact that I couldn't even get silver paint. I could not even get a silver spray. Because that's actually no. Because these ships here were done with a different silver. They were done with uh, gunmetal. So. And they were done with gunmetal spray. So just about everything here has been sprayed. Contrast. Very few of the minor details. Um, such as the minor details here, if we zoom right in here. Um, around, as you can see, the collars, the, um, the gold mustaches, a few of these things. Um, the, also the brass, obviously. All these things have been done with, uh, traditional colors. Um, and we've also got some, some effects here from some technicals. Um, we've got the, uh, uh, the, I forget the technical, what it called, what it's called, it's, um, it's a kind of, uh, ah, uh, it's a brass technical, which works by, um, ah, oh man, I forgot it. Ah, oh, well, but, yeah, now, we do have names for each of these, which are on my army list. I just forget what each of them are now. Uh, they're being named. So Ingvar Stoneforge here is our named leader. Um, this guy has been named by the uh, fan community uh, by a commenter. And I do have his name written down. I just kind of remember it off the top of my head. Uh, so everyone, we still need names for this and uh, this guy and the navigator. Also, this ship here, also named by a commenter. This one is the uh, Durak, uh, Durak Gal. Yeah. And I've got those painted on the sides of it. Um, and so, this is our first of our videos talking about the Age of Sigma armies we've got. And our next video will be, in all likelihood, talking about the uh, Seraphon. As we start a new series of building an army, as we work towards building the new Soul Blight Grave Lords. Alright, I have been Jay from Jade Productions, and I will see you all next time. Remember, subscribe, comment, and naming competition. Uh, names, people, for, for these, if you've got any. Uh, and... Thank you again for watching, and watching as I've gone along and built this army, um, a 
video, I'll have a list breakdown video uh, to follow up this video in a few weeks, which will cover um, the exacts of the list, the tactics, and everything else about this um, army competitively, how it performs the tabletop, after I can get it to the tabletop, preferably. Um, though I have uh, been forced to go to Tabletop Simulator recently, <clears throat> due to COVID lockdowns once again. So, uh, I've been Jay from Jade Productions. Thank you all for supporting and uh, watching as the Henretta Trading Company takes its flight and grows into this, ready to plow the skies of the Veiled Coast in the realm of Ulgu. Ready to make profits, make bank, and take all your riches back to Barrack Urbaz.